Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus AEW Dynamite just happened um, here on October 28th, 2020. Um, a show that was very solid and uh, very workmanlike, moved a bunch of things forward, um, was interesting where it needed to be, surprising um, where it needed to be as well. Um, good to see it. Good to see it. Um, including a couple of people that I saw in AEW Dark um, the day before who did a stellar fucking job on AEW Dynamite. And a couple of things seem like they're on the mend to getting fixed in short order, which is great too. We got JR, Tony, and Excalibur. Um, before the show starts, um, they promote the uh, MJF Inner Circle thing. Is the Inner Circle going to take MJF in their ranks? Um, the semifinals for this tournament to determine who is going to get a title shot at the AEW title. And Orange Cassidy against Cody for the TNT title. Pretty packed show. They're going up. This is a tape show. I did my best to avoid spoilers, though I did read about uh, Abaddon having a match and where Abaddon got very seriously hurt against Tay Conti. So we certainly wish Abaddon the best. Um, we got the open for AEW. They promote that we're going to have, uh, oh, that we have got Wardlow and MJF right away with Sasha starting to talk. Sonny Guevara comes out and says how much he doesn't like MJF. MJF really shines here um, in this promo. Um, that, you know, he says, Sonny Guevara, you don't really cut promos. And he, he looked like you sell Adderall to middle schoolers. Killer line. Um, one thing you notice right away is the crowd is incredibly loud for this whole show. I don't know what they're doing differently, but it is effective. And you, it really feels like that live crowd is really a part of things. Uh, and they're reacting to things big. It's really well done. First match, Wardlow against Adam Page, which is a semifinal match. I normally don't write down spots that happen, but I got to say that close that moonsault to the floor by Adam Page on Wardlow was spectacular. His clotheslines that he did throughout were really great, and the two buckshot lariats to win the match really fucking looked awesome. Adam Page is going to the final. Uh, they promote the fact that the other semifinal match is going to be Omega against Penta, and of course, uh, people are looking for Omega to win that so we can have an Adam Page Omega final. I got to say, this pay per view happening full gear um, really is shaping up as well. They're just AEW feels like they're hitting. Um, we're gonna have Serena Deeb um, against Layla Hirsch. Layla Hirsch impressed the shit out of me on AEW Dark. Uh, I like her, I just like the cut of her jib. And Serena Deeb is the new NWA Women's Champion, so this working relationship between the NWA and AEW is apparently continuing. We're going to have Cody against Orange Cassidy that they promote. We're going to have this town hall with MJF um, trying to get into the inner circle. We're going to have Eddie Kingston against Matt Seidel. Interesting. And uh, Moxley talks a little more about Eddie Kingston. Um, the shots of Moxley talking about Eddie Kingston with Eddie Kingston having the rosary and praying. What can you fucking say? It's just good shit, man. It's really good. It's in match number two, and we're off and running. Eddie Ken Kingston comes to the ring with Bunny, Butcher, and Blade at his side. And then we go to commercial. So think about it. We had crap promoted all over the place. We had a full match, and uh, then we went to commercial. My God, is this thing so much more watchable than Raw is. Raw never gives you a full anything and it's always just a bunch of blah blah yap yap that takes forever and then they always cut away from the first match and it's just badly run but this feels great and come back from commercial we got a kingston promo of course we do in the ring super good setting up all the stories that he's involved in and his people are involved in matt Seidel comes to the ring we get a split screen in the midst of their match so we can continue to watch it. Um, something I noted in my notes, Eddie is in better shape than he was even a couple of weeks ago. I see you, Eddie. Uh, I see you getting in better shape, and it looks great. Uh, Eddie can get away with anything because he's so good at talking and he's so good in the ring and tells good stories, but the fact that he's gotten into better shape I thought should have been noted by the uh, commentators and everybody else, frankly, because I noticed. It's very obvious, and... Um, it's really cool the fact that he's getting in better shape, uh, you know, gearing up for this important match with Moxley at full gear. 
Um, Eddie Kingston wins with this back fist that looks better every time. And then he does a bulldog choke a la Moxley to get the win. And then he continues to do the choke and makes Matt, you know, he's like, <laughs> Moxley, say you quit because they're going to have an I quit match. Matt uh, Seidel says I quit. And then Eddie goes, I'm so sorry, Moxley. I'm so sorry. Again, layered, interesting, you can't turn away kind of stuff. Eddie Kingston's making it happen. What can I say? We have a little promo thing where they're not together. Excalibur's with the Young Bucks, and he's going to kind of try to conduct this interview because they're going to wrestle each other at full gear as well. FTR's with Tully. Uh, the long and short of it is the Young Bucks sort of deny that uh, Matt's injury is serious, um, and FTR gets offended because the Bucks get more than one question in a row, so they leave. It, it there is definitely feels like there's a tension there, and that's what they're going for. And the Young Bucks announce in sort of brash um, fashion that even if they can't if they can't win the titles from FTR, then they're not going to get another tag team title shot. Oh, now we got the Town Hall. Luchasaurus asks a question. Uh, it wasn't really worth going over. Uh, Britt Baker with Reba. Reba does the thing that the lady did at the Trump Town Hall, saying how he has Jericho has a great smile. Britt Baker sort of points out that maybe um, MJF isn't trustworthy. Peter Avalon asks if he can be part of the inner circle, and they diss him and get him out. And then Eric Bischoff shows up and asks very relevant questions. Um, the long and short of it is Jericho challenges MJF to a match at full gear, saying if MJF can beat him, then they'll let him in the inner circle. Um, Sammy and uh, Ortiz, which I think Sammy Guevara and Ortiz say, we don't, we're not feeling you being in this at all. So we challenge MJF and Warlow to a match next week, and we're never going to accept you. Um, cool. AEW Dark, they show clips from that about Will Hobbs and this thing with Taz has about we've made him this offer and he still hasn't responded to us. Match number three, Orange Cassidy. Then we go to commercial. And then we get a big entrance by Cody Rhodes. Um, they wrestle a big match, Lumberjacks, lots of stories told. You can watch that yourself. I'm not really here to recap every little nitpicking detail. There's lots of people that do that. I'm here to talk about stuff that really stood out to me. Um, the match looked great. It was a foregone conclusion match. I think the match that we want to see is Cody Rhodes against Darby Allen. And I think for all the jobs that Darby has done, I think Darby should win this match. I hate to say things like that, but I think it, at this point it really would serve them to have Darby Allen with that title. But the superplex from Cody Rhodes and Orange Cassidy on top of the whole pile was incredibly freaking amazing and uh orange getting cheap shotted to lose was what it was darby watching from the wings um and so it goes commercial we come back alex marvez is talking to the best friends but then kip and miro interrupt them give them a present penelope is dressed like orange cassidy uh, but it's all a distraction so kip and miro can beat up on the best friends and then they show that the present was in fact the piece of the video game machine um, yeah, so I guess they're going to have a match soon. Mm, the Miro stuff is just so, oh God, it's got to get better, I hope. Match number four, Serena Deeb, the NWA Women's Champion against Layla Hirsch. Um, Serena Deeb cuts a very blah promo. Boy, did she not seem like she was ready to do that. That just didn't work. I love that they let people cut promos, including people that you don't necessarily expect them from, and sometimes they miss and that missed. But the match did not. Holy of jumping Jesus. It's a match that felt worthy um, of the superior women's wrestling that's often gone on in the WWE, but now is beginning to slip on Raw and possibly SmackDown as well. Now that Bailey and Sasha appear like they've wrapped their thing up. And now AEW feels on par with them. Um, shout out again to Layla Hirsch. You should be signed. You're fucking great. And Serena Deeb. Uh, great, great stuff as well, as far as in-ring. Then they cut to Sheeta, who talks. Oh, my God, it's getting to hear different women. My God, if we didn't have, if, if Abaddon didn't get hurt, we would have yet two women's matches and a promo by Sheeta. Um, definitely a better look than we've been seeing for how they've treated the women wrestlers lately. Sheeta's there with Alex Marvez, and basically, Nyla says she's not going to wrestle until she can wrestle Sheeta. Well, Sheeta says, well, I want you at full gear. Good deal. Good deal. 
Uh, match number five. This is probably the match that was brought in in lieu of the uh, Abaddon accident. And we got Sean Spears against VSK, who I thought did a pretty good job on Dark here. Who knows how good of a job he did because he just gets scooped up, put in the Death Valley driver, and pinned. Sean Spears gets distracted by someone in a bull costume. Everybody and their mother knows it's Scorpio Sky, but whatever. They go through the steps, and it's fun. He drags Scorpio Sky in the ring, goes to hit him with the loaded glove. Scorpio Sky scoops him up, hits him with the TKO. And so looks like we're going to have Sean Spears and Scorpio Sky possibly next week. Um, full gear, I gotta say, all the graphics and all of that stuff looks cool. Whoever came up with that whole ske um, scheme, take a bow. And the people that I know who work for AEW and wrestle for AEW who listen to this, please tell me who came up with the whole full gear look. With the gears and it's sort of... Um, it's sort of steampunky, and every one of those like flyers and posters and matchup um, marquee things looks fucking great. It just looks great and top notch, and it's a top notch card. Um, John Moxley against Eddie Kingston for the title, FTR and the Bucks for the tag title, Sheeta against Nyla Rose for the women's title, Hardy and Guevara in an elite delete match, um, Cody against Darby Allen for the TNT title, my God, MJF against Jericho for MJF being able to get into the inner circle, and then John Silver against Orange Cassidy since John Silver interfered at the end of that Orange Cassidy match, hitting him with a pump kick. That's going to be our buy-in match. That is a fucking good card, folks. Gonna have to find a way to see it. My God, I don't know if I can spend that money, but uh, figure it out. Um, next week's show, and now they promote next week's show. You see how they motherfucking do, man? They just promote, 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 and they make sure you know what's going on. It's just solid, and it's just good. Chris Jericho is going to be on commentary next week. Um, Ortiz and Sammy are going to go against MGF and Wardlow. Miro and Trent, I guess. Oh, Miro is going to wrestle Trent of the best friends. Uh, Sean Spears against Scorpio Sky, and... Um, Oh, what am I? Oh, 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 oh. I see. Uh, Cody, again, the uh, Gun Club, Austin and Billy Gunn, against the uh, three members of the Dark Order. And then uh, Mox, um, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston are going to have a one on one where they face off and will cut, no doubt, fucking great promos to build up their match. Exciting shit. And then our main event, Penta. El Zero Medo against Omega. What can you say? They got a split screen. The fucking destroyer, Canadian destroyer on the ramp was fucking bananas. A very good exhibition for Kenny Omega, of course. And his new entrance where he sort of like embraces all the accolades that he's gotten that people seem to get mad about now. I think it was smart. They had the cleaner girls out there in the fucking <laughs> masks of the Lucha Brothers in an attempt to be disrespectful. And then the uh, finish was absolutely on point. Every V-trigger looked amazing, and the finisher looked great. And so we're going to get Omega and Paige as well at full gear. Holy shit, a very good Dynamite. They needed a very good Dynamite, and they got it. Really good. Anyway, this has been Stephen Platinum versus AEW Dynamite for October 28th, 2020. And if I don't talk to you again before then, have a happy Halloween, motherfuckers.